Hi, we have a special order for some Springerly cookies. So despite the fact that the holidays were weeks ago, we're now into mid-January, uh, I am gonna make some Springerly cookies, but this gives us an opportunity to bring you in on it and make a video showing you how we do it. Springerly cookies are a specialty, a very old-fashioned German cookie, and they're unique in a couple of ways. Uh, one is that there's no fat in the recipe, meaning no butter, no oil, no lard. Um, they're not sadly low calorie cookies, but uh, they have a very distinct, very firm texture uh, because of the lack of fat and the flavor is, is rather intense as well, the, the anise flavor um, that we add to it. The other unusual thing is that they're embossed with very elaborate designs and then you allow them to sit overnight so the design dries and then when you bake it you can uh, preserve that nice uh, firm design. So uh, I'm going to start getting the dough together and uh, I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so what we did was put some eggs and some powdered sugar along with a pinch of salt and the anise oil uh, into the mixer and we mixed them until the eggs were very light colored, falls from the beater in a ribbon. That's what you want to see. And uh, we're making a double batch, but for a single batch you would use three eggs three and a half cups of powdered sugar, a half teaspoon or so of salt, and um, a half teaspoon to one teaspoon of anise oil. Uh, the oil is really strong. You can use extract. It is not as strong. Um, it is really coming out of the bowl into my face here. Um, but as we add more ingredients and as they sit out overnight and then get baked, that flavor will dial back to something a little less um, sinus clearing. So the next thing we're gonna do is add the flour and that will be our dough. So um, three and a half cups of flour, same as the powdered sugar, is uh, how much you would add for a single batch. Like I said, I'm doing a double batch. So let's add some flour. Okay, we have dough. So now I'm gonna wash my hands and turn it out onto the board and uh, show you what that looks like. So this is our dough. We're going to let it rest for uh, about half an hour, uh, give or take. That'll give us time to set up our baking sheets, uh, get the molds out, set up our flour, and uh, we can show you more then. Now this dough is, is fairly soft, but it is firm. If your dough is uh, very dry or tough, you can add a little water to the batter. Um, if you have tried this and this dough is just too hard to work with, there are recipes that call for a little bit of oil and they are softer doughs. So there, there is no Springerly police. Use whatever dough you can work with. Uh, same with the flavoring. Some people really don't like anise flavoring or that black licorice flavor. You can use a lemon flavoring, um, just vanilla, uh, whatever you like. So uh, it's, it's not supposed to be too rigid. Uh, I mean, just getting the cookies to imprint correctly is hard enough, so don't torture yourself about all the rest of this. We're going to let this rest and be right back. Okay, 
so what I have set up for this part of it is uh, some flour, a rolling pin, a bench knife, which is very useful for uh, both lifting them up and moving them as well as cutting them. Um, I have some molds here that I'm going to work with, and I also have some cutters that are the size of some of the molds, some of the round ones. Uh, the others I'll just cut with the bench knife. All right, so I've got a hunk of dough that I just sawed off of my big circle there. And uh, I'm just gonna press it out a little bit first before I start to roll it. This is not gonna be a very big piece of dough to work with because you wanna keep it fairly thick. And by fairly thick, probably a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more if you're working with really deep molds. So, this is rolling out very nicely, thankfully, and uh, I think that's good. So, yeah, about a quarter of an inch. It does now, because it's sort of nice and soft at the moment, rolling out nicely and softly, I want to make sure that there's a layer of flour on the dough itself, and then that the mold is well floured. This is an acorn. This is the world's greatest Springerly mold. It's so forgiving. Um, so it's a good one to start with. So you just pick a spot and push. We're on our third acorn Springerly mold because we have broken two of them. We're trying to hammer them on to really tough dough or just using them over and over and over again. That looks pretty nice. I'm going to hold it up for you to see after I cut it out here. So, we have an acorn. And uh, we're just going to keep going with different molds. And I will uh, try to show you a complicated one and a simple one, a shallow one, and a deep one. This one's fairly shallow, but it has a lot of detail. And Springerly, because they're German cookies, most of the molds, if they have any words on them, are in German. Uh, so this one says Zuckerbacher, sugar baker. And you can see this. He's in a bakery, he's got some different confections there. Got a hat, got little boots, the whole works. Now, keep these scraps because you can re-roll them. Uh, you can't re-roll them indefinitely, but you should be able to get at least one, maybe two more go-arounds with this. Uh, now we're gonna try a deep mold. This is an owl. And uh, I love this mold, but it's what we're, what we're aiming for is the texture of the wing, which is the very deepest part of the mold. So, push as much as we can, carefully lift back. Pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do, cut around this so I can show you. So you can see, it's pretty good definition. Now, I know there's more feather markings on the wing of this owl, so because it's such a specific and elaborate pattern, it'll just find its way right back in there, and you can kind of push on the part that you want. Maybe that's cheating, I don't know. I think the point is to make it look like an owl with feathers on its wings. The point isn't necessarily to only do that one way. So, there we go. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's feathers on his wings now. So, let's do one that has its own shape. This is a castle. Got it all 
flour it up. We've had this mold for a long time, so I know full well that I'm going to be going at this from a few different directions to try to get it. All of the turrets of the castle, the little flags on the turrets, uh, it's really, really elaborate. So, this isn't bad, but see this. The flags and the turrets are there, but none of this foreground, which again is the deepest part of the mold, is uh, coming through. So I'm going to try to see if it finds its way back in. Yep, it doesn't wiggle at all. I'm just going to push, try to get that extra indentation. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. going a little slow. It is a slow process, but something I can do to uh, get through this dough uh, is use the roller. Now, hopefully you can see there's designs all the way around, and if you do it right, you can cut in one go 20 or 30 cookies. Uh, we also have a giant roller. I have to admit, I've never attempted to use this because it's heavy and uh, yeah. So, same as before, get it all floured up as much as we can. Just like with any other mold. The surface floured, rolled out a nice fresh piece of dough. No re-rolled scraps here. All right, and you can't go back over it, so you have to go in as, uh, as firm and determined as you can. little like hieroglyphs in a tomb, but uh, I think we have at least a dozen usable cookies here, and I uh, can do the old trick of cutting it out and pressing it back into the mold if there's one that I think I could salvage. So that's using a roller, and uh, yeah, let's get to work. Now, Earlier, you saw that I was cutting out the cookies as I went, and this is exactly why, because as the next one imprints, it distorts the dough quite a bit. So that's why you cut as you go. Yeah. All right. straight, more or less straight, yeah. Okay. Nice uh, mountain goat, something like that, that I just dropped. Sheep. A dog, I think. A rabbit. 
we go. Uh, what do we have here? Got a camel. Got a horse, got a squirrel, got a cat, got, I don't know what that is. Uh, frog and all kinds of stuff. I have to set up a new tree now. Yay! Okay, so I have uh, two sheet pans full of spray all nicely imprinted. I'm standing by the oven, but I'm not going to put them in the oven. I'm going to let them sit out overnight. And just like this, no plastic wrap over them, nothing. Let them sit out. The uh, uh, design will harden on top, and the cookies will rise from the bottom if they rise very much. So, you know, they spring from the bottom. That's why they're called spring early. Uh, and uh, we will come back tomorrow, and you will be able to see the cookies will look quite a bit different after they've dried out uh, than they do right now. So you can actually see they're starting to, uh, the design is becoming a little more crisp and the cookies are taking on the, the pale color that we will want them to have after they're baked as well. So we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and our cookies have been sitting out all night and I will uh, give you a look at those in just a second. Um, but lest you think you have already done the hard part, now we have to bake them uh, as gently as we can. What we want is to preserve this sort of ivory color and these um, crisp designs. So we have to try to bake them all the way through without browning them at all. So uh, I set the oven to 225 degrees, figuring that we'll probably end up around 250. Um, and uh, we'll put them in in just a second. But first, let me get you, give you a look at uh, how they look after they've dried overnight. Okay, here they are. You can see that they've dried to a, a nice uh, crisp, images and they actually look like finished cookies but of course they're not and uh, even though these are uh, rather hard and pale on the outside they are still underdone underneath them you can see that's raw cookie these look pretty good so We'll put them in the oven and hold our breath. Okay, they're gonna go into the oven and we're gonna bake them for probably around 20 minutes. Um, it could be as long as 25. We're gonna start checking on them though after about 13 or 14 minutes. Um, and if there's, they look at all like they're taking on color that will uh, slow the whole thing down as much as we can. So uh, here goes. Okay, it's been 20 minutes, so let's see if we can uh, figure out if these are done or not. I think they're done. Okay, I flipped one over so you could see what I was looking for, which is that the bottom puffed up a little bit. In this case, it actually, there's a crack in there. 
Um, but, you know, it looks done. They smell done. Uh, you can see, hopefully you can see, that most of them have puffed a little bit from the bottom. But the designs are still nice and crisp on top. So uh, I think we have uh, achieved our goal here of making Springerly and uh, getting the designs to imprint and hold and getting them to bake all the way through without adding any color to the tops of the cookies. So yum! And uh, they look great. One thing about, another thing about Springerly that is maybe unusual is they're meant to age. They're meant to ripen. Uh, people make them months ahead of time sometimes. They do get pretty hard. They're, they're a dunking cookie by the time it's done. Um, but, you know, the, a lot of the German Christmas cookies are the same way. They're, they're meant to keep for a long time. Uh, we do put ours in the freezer after we make them, um, so they're, you know, everything's totally fresh when people get them. Uh, so, we got, uh, can you see it? All kinds of cookies here, and this, I'm trying to get, there we go. Uh, just so you can see that the bottom does puff a little bit, it's not a full-on foot like a Macron would have, but uh, it does it does puff a little bit from the bottom. And my sister wants me to point out that this is not a quarter of an inch. It is more like an eighth of an inch. Don't roll it to a quarter of an inch, like I said. Um, that's probably too thick. And uh, what else can I tell you? We got a bunch of great looking Springerly. It is time consuming. Um, but hopefully worth it because uh, you, you really don't see cookies like this anywhere. So, hope you enjoyed it.